It's a real honor to stand in front of you and to have you give me your attention. And it's a real honor to be in this beautiful place, this theatrical place. And it is about place that I'd like to talk. Because we are at a transformative, evolutionary shift about place. Because the concept of place has changed forever. Now, everybody in this room didn't choose your parents, right? Which means you didn't choose where you were raised. That was done unto you. And it's a really formative experience, right? Childhood and where you were raised. And yet we don't really think about how much place shapes who we are, how we think. But it is something we always kind of intuitively know is important. And I'm sure that uh, all of you have had this experience. You know, you get on the plane, buckled up, haven't quite put on your noise reduction headset, or you've just had your first day of vacation in a wonderful resort, and you're just sitting down to have a nice cold drink, look at this beautiful visage, and somebody comes up to you, sits down next to you, and says, so, where are you from, right? But intuitively, we know to lead with that, even though that's not a very smart, intelligent way to open a conversation. But why do we do that? Because place has always shaped us. It shaped us our entire lives and the entire history of humanity. Why? Because where we live. If we live in France, we live differently than if we live in South Florida. How we speak, if we're born in Alabama, we speak differently than if we're born in Boston or born in Hamburg. We speak differently because of our placeness, right? What we think and believe is obviously clear. If you live in Mumbai, you think differently than if you live in Baghdad because of your placeness. You know, how we live, the way we live, if you live on the equator, you live differently than if you live above the Arctic Circle. Completely different ways to live simply because of the place in which you are living. What we eat, that's pretty obvious. National cuisines came about because nations are places and cuisines kind of bubbled up within that nation state. And of course, who we root for. I mean, if you're rooting for the Toronto Maple Leafs or you're rooting for the Boston Red Sox or Manchester United, it is probably because you live near there or you grew up there or you passed through there. Or who do you root for in college, right? Most of us are out of college here, most of us, and yet we root for our college team because we spent four years there. So that was the place. It meant a lot to us. So we're going to root for that team through good and bad. It's kind of interesting. So place really defines us, but it also limits us, and it has limited us throughout history. Just think about how you learned about ancient civilizations. You know, you learn about them individually. But that's because place kept them apart. Now, the Roman Empire, a little bit before B.C., about 476 A.D., happened in the Mediterranean. It was a great civilization. We have read about the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Decline and fall in large part because it imploded on itself. It didn't have any interactivity with any place else. And it could have because simultaneously to the Roman Empire were the great dynasties of China. Chinese never interacted with the Romans because place, distance, kept them apart. At the same time, there was the Mayan civilization. All three of these civilizations coexisted, but they didn't know that they did because the distance kept them apart. They were completely based within place. Remember that if you think about history, how we learn about them separately. What if these three existed today? We'd know about everything that was going on within 24 hours, right? We're all so connected. So place is really limited civilization. Now, the agricultural age started 10,000 years ago. And that's where the concept of place began. Because we stopped following the food and following the weather and put down roots, literally, and place began. So the 10,000 years of the agricultural age is when all the great civilizations and all the great religions that come to mind occurred, up until about 200 years ago. So only in the last 2% 
of all of recorded history has distance begun to shrink. And that's because of technology. Technology and connectivity.